miles. Hey guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. Today, we're driving. I'm in my crap box and I am on my way to work on a pretty sweet fox body. We're gonna get some wiring squared away. We're gonna get uh, some tuning squared away. We've got a lot of work to do and uh, I've got, I think at this point, like a day and a half. We'll kind of see how things go, but uh, yeah, we're going to get some work done and we're going to try to get uh, get the car running, driving, and all the issues squared away. So let's get to it, guys. If you can't tell, I'm a little tired. <laughs> Worked till 5 in the morning today and slept for about an hour and a half and then got on the road to, to come here. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I'm pumped to be able to do this, so let's get it going. That's going to get me through the weekend. All right, we're here to work on Shane's car. These guys are awesome. Nice enough to let us use their shop to work on Shane's ride. Let's go see the beast. Got a nice shop. beast. Got a little bit of wiring to work on. I'm gonna get a uh, speedometer going on the pie dash. Gotta put a battery in this thing. See why she ain't firing. She's gonna run. All right, found some issues with some of the injector wiring squared that away also had some boost control settings that were set wrong in here causing it not to run so we had to turn boost control off it was trying to use the final port in addition to the pwm for the uh idle control so turn that off and then we also had to increase our priming pulse so that uh we could get it to pulse the injectors and prime it. So we got that done, now we're gonna try to start it. We found that there was not a ground on the injector harness, so that's why our jerry-rigged pile of crap like this, we've got a ground on our distributor back over to here. And then back here, we're gonna to have to add a ground for the injector harness that is missing. So normally right here on the Fox, you'll have a ground strap there, and then uh, that'll go to the injector harness, so we're gonna to have to make that. However, it's ready to start. Just like that. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> That's a clearly we found what the issue is. Now we got to get all this crap out of the way. We get the hot side on. I'm gonna get a ground strap made to go from the block to the chassis. I'm also gonna get the ground strap to go from the uh, fuel injector harness to the chassis. Then we're gonna start wiring in the cutout switch for the battery. We're gonna have this pig on the road. So I guess Shane Nivall did some uh, Cerakoting on these parts. Turned out really damn good. It's almost a shame we're gonna get it all dirty. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so we're going from the Borg Warner. Shane, what size is the Borg Warner? S475. S475 with a cast wheel. To a VS Racing 80 millimeter billet, to a VS racing 80 millimeter billet yeah, wheel. Gen 2. Gen 2, look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Look at the size difference. It's the difference between Shane and I. So we got the ignition no worky. That's done. Verify timing. Did that. We're doing the turbo hot side now. Why we got the cutoff switch, power dash, or pie dash, power draw, trans bag, bump, bump box, wide band, and then uh, the other thing we got to do 
is the fuel sender. There's our list of goodies. So just got to start going down the list, cross things off, and get it done. This thing's going to drive tomorrow. Ooh. Headers on. Bolts aren't tight. We're just going to leave it. Oh, I'm just kidding. Send it. Send it. Mint. We're <laughs> I'm getting a little crazy over here, but now it's time to put the rest of the hot side on. We got to finish up the ground for the engine. So you can see right there, that bolt. Yeah, nothing on there. That's pretty sweet. Thank so we're gonna you fix that. <laughs> Fucking douchebag. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that out. They're gonna demonetize my video. Really? Cussing. got to swap the drain over but we noticed the flange is different on these turbos it's supposed to be a direct replacement so we didn't even think of it but you can see clearly there's the style that we had not the same so that's kind of a bummer so we have a problem and we found out how to fix it just add another turbo to it so <laughs> this one's got the flange that we need uh, what size is this? Is this an 80 mil also? That is also an 80. That's a but Gen that's a, 1. Okay, so that's a VS racing as well? Yes. So this is a Gen 1. That's a Gen 2. What's the difference on the two? The uh, the housing. This one has the anti-surge. Cool. And this one this one here has got the different cover. I can't remember what Byron said it was. And then it's got the bigger, bigger wheels. So the Gen 2 has got bigger wheels, basically capable of more power. Both have a billet wheel. Man, they're both good looking turbos, but where the hell do you find an air filter for that one? Well, my application, <laughs> there isn't one. Just run a turbo guard on it or what? No. Nothing? Just Eat wide it. open? Eat it. WFO? That's it. That's awesome. Man, look at the machining in that wheel. Looks so cool. You can tell how much bigger that wheel is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but that wheel is a hell of a lot bigger than this one awesome it will happen so we're gonna put eventually the gen 2 will go on oh yeah but for now just so we can get things as soon as i get this need to get it started out. running make sure everything's good we use this one then as soon as we get this flange adapted so you just have to cut this off and put the right flange on yeah all right let's get it put on I dumped him on. <laughs> He's lost his all. Everything's looking good. Last thing we got to do is tighten up the oil drain fitting onto the oil pan on this side, and then we got to go tighten up the was it the oil dipstick tube on the other side, and pretty much it. At least for mechanical stuff. Turbo. Oh, the uh, the other the other thing we got to do that bolt right up there. We've got to connect our ground wire for the engine block because yeah. right now nothing's grounded, which is super awesome. So we got to get that done too. All right, now that we've got our injector ground on, she should come right to life. Lost a wrench. I left that wrench on top of your intake. <laughs> Got it. Yeah.
lube all tightened up. Rerouted a couple things. Now these are our wires for the alternator to cut it off. So we ran these from the back of the cutoff or at the cutoff switch. We're gonna come up here and tie into our alternator. This is a one wire, but it's got a power wire. You can't see it, I don't have light right now, but there's a power wire coming out of here and then there's a stator wire. The power wire comes right off the battery so that it starts up right away. We're just gonna tap into that guy and go back to the switch. And then the other side will tie into here, so. All right guys, I know I talked about this on one of my other videos, but when you are wiring up a cutoff switch, there's two different styles of switches you can use. Um, if you are running a full on race car and you have no alternator, all you need is one with the two battery posts. Um, you can also make the same, uh, same one work if you're not running a full out race car. You just have to reference my other video. It's the way that I did my car. Um, or they make this one for the battery cutoff to the car. And then also right here, is the activation wire for your alternator if you got it that way. So the way that this works is when the switch is off it breaks the connection between the activation wire and the alternator and the battery um, and then when uh, when it's on it gives power to the car and also out to the alternator. The big thing on this is to make sure that if the car is running it shuts it off. So here's the dilemma. If you don't wire this upright and you actually um, need it in an emergency type situation. The alternator will keep the car running if you have it isolated in uh, on the battery side or on the car side of it. So um, it's very crucial that you get this done right. There's a bunch of wiring diagrams out there too, but I can put a link for my other video. So the last thing that we got to do for the alternator cutoff is wired up on the back side of the alternator. So we've got the wires run underneath. I've got to zip tie them up out of the way. Then I've got to connect to the alternator, um, and then we'll test that and make sure it shuts off the whole car. Yeah, battery's hooked up. All right, so we got the alternator kill switch wired up. That wire's out of the way. Now we're going to test it. Let me make sure it's on. We'll clear under the hood. Okay, now it's on. Turn it on, make sure everything... Fires up. Let's make sure you didn't leave any tools underneath there. Excuse me. I don't think so. All right, go ahead and start up. Kill switch works. Time for the bump box install. So we got it centered on the panel here. We'll get it all wired up and test it. Life will be good. We got a wiring diagram for said bump box. So we're gonna wire this guy up. It was a smooth stage. So pretty simple. We'll have a ground, battery power, Tan color for trigger wire, switch power, and then our solenoid power. So this is for the trans brake. This is basically just going to intercept that trans brake. That way when you um, when you go to bump in, it lets it work the way it needs to. So we're going to follow this guy, get it installed, and test it. Quiet on the set. To hell. I'm trying to make a video. I'm trying to make some money here, and you guys are just... Uh, so <laughs> Shane had a good idea. Instead of using this switch, right, so this is your typical switch for a bump box. It'll get wrapped around stuff unless you got it hanging everywhere. We're going to use the horn on the steering wheel. So we're not using the horn as it is. So there's a factory relay right into the dash for it. What we're going to do is re-pin this connector. Come in here. So there's a, a connector under the dash here for the horn. This right here goes to a factory relay, but it's a specialty one. So we're just going to take the... Um, those connections are spade connectors and they'll fit right onto this relay. So we're just going to take it out of that connector because this relay is shot, tie it into this relay, boom, bump box, done. And we'll just run the wires over to our bump box itself and life's going to be good. This is going to be a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was, so that makes life happy. These connectors here, there's a little piece in there that you push up and then it releases the, uh, the pin. I can't do this with... There we go. Uh huh.
just like that. Release that pin, the connector comes right out, and we'll be able to just plug that right onto our new relay. Boom! All right, so we've got the uh, bump box wired up. Should come on with the switch. There we go. We'll make sure our um, trans brake still works. Can you hear that? And then we've got our trans brake held in, and we hit this button. You'll see the green light on there come on. Yep, there we go. Boom, boom. Awesome. One last thing to do. All right, you uh, shut it off. Y'all guys like to uh, give people crap about butt splices. You know who you are. And I just want to show you something. This, this is why I don't like solder, right? If y'all guys are gonna do solder, at least do it right. This is garbage, so I'm gonna put butt splices in. It's okay. And for the record, I know this looks like a rat's nest, but it's a thousand times better All than right, it was. Alright, it is time. Now we're going to load everything into the pie dash. is running and starting so the primary issue that I came here for was that it left uh, Shane stranded in a parking lot couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start um, I think you guys saw at the beginning of the video found a couple of ground wires that were missing I'm not sure how it was running before um, if the TFI module doesn't have a ground it's really hard for it to run work and do its thing but uh, man she sounds good so we got the 80 mil turbo on even though it's the gen 1 but uh vs racing gen one i'm gonna try to get all right so i'm not sure where i left off in the last clip but shane's car left him stranded the tfi module i found well not the tfi module itself there's a ground missing i mentioned this at the beginning of the video a ground that's for the whole ignition system basically your um, injectors and the tfi the block wasn't grounded either uh, as soon as we did that you saw it fired right up so we also had to fix a lot of stuff on this list. Ignition at the top, verify timing, put everything back together. We wired in his cutoff switch, we tested that. Man, pie dash, trans brake, bump box. <laughs> uh, what didn't we do? I think the only thing we didn't get to was the fuel pump. Uh, the fuel sender. We got to verify the GPS is working. So we're getting a weird reading, but as you can see, we're inside of a you know tin shed here. So, man, that was a hell of a lot of fun. So we've got a lot of stuff done on this. This car is going to be an animal. So hopefully Shane gets me some some videos of the car flying down the track. Looks really good. This is all the Cerakoting. Cerakote by Nuthouse and Shane Nival. Good and old Nuthouse. We thought originally that it was the, the Cerakote that was, that's not even hot. Mm -mm. Holy cow, that's crazy. I'm not touching that though. That's hot. <laughs> I'm holding the headers. That's what I'm saying, it's warm but it ain't hot. Feel me holding this. My hands. That's, that's right after we got done running it. My hands are on it, people. That's crazy. You don't understand. That's amazing. That's just the hot side of a turbo system. Yeah, it's only been running for 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> no. The uh, the radiator's hotter than the dang headers. That's awesome. Wow. I love this car. I'm excited. So, I'll, I also tightened up your uh, alternator belt. It wasn't squealing, but you see how it's kind of moving? Mm. I think that top bolt needs tightened too. I didn't tighten that. I don't, I don't know why it's flexing like that. It shouldn't, I don't know. You'll have to check that, see how tight it is. Dang, man. I love it. 
we had to run the the switch wires all the way underneath the car zip tie those out of the way there's so much stuff i can't remember everything that we did look how much cleaner it looks inside here oh i don't have a here i'll get my gorilla strength on here for you you've been doing work all day i haven't it's a little tight from the roll cage look at how much cleaner it looks in here we did some work we do have a door panel for the driver's side it's just not on right now we're uh wiring up for the power windows we had to make sure oh, the yeah. wires were, were that's set. the other thing we had to get to next time but that's what they look like yeah, there's always stuff to do on a project car. Anyway, guys, that's it. It's late. I've got a couple of hours to drive to get home, and uh, I have real, real man's work to do tomorrow. So, unfortunately, that involves no fun. This has been awesome. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank oh, you. Oh, hell yeah, man. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. We'll see you, ne we'll see you next time.